to the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide. We are back for our December edition, and we basically decided that we were going to hold off on December until we got through week 13, because as everybody knows, week 13, going into week 14, starts the fantasy playoffs. So we're looking forward to that. Today I'm being joined by several members of the Nightly News down here at the Nasir Harris Podcast Studio. We're being joined by Parker Rose. Parker, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Professor Miller. You're quite welcome. We're also joined by Dylan Kleintop. Dylan, as always, it's a pleasure. It's also a pleasure being here. Well, thank you. And, of course, Nightly News President Brian Christiana. Brian, you are the only member here that's been on every Fantasy Football Strategy Guide, so you're the veteran at this point. So welcome back. Thank you, sir. Well, one of the things that we wanted to start off with, uh, we have a lot going on today. Obviously, we're going into the fantasy playoffs, as I mentioned. Uh, at the beginning of the show, we are going to talk about our top 20, uh, maybe also talk about a little, a few more of the people maybe just outside the top 20. We're also, on the first segment of the show, going to talk a little bit more about some general playoff strategy for those maybe getting to the playoffs for their first time. When we come back on the second segment of this show, we're going to talk about some significant injuries. Week 13 was unbelievable with the number of injuries that happened. So we're going to talk about some of those injuries and maybe who you might be able to pick up to replace those individuals. We're also going to take a look at the top waiver wire additions uh, because at this point, uh, making sure that you have who you need going into your fantasy playoffs, often very important. One thing that I did want to start off at the top of the show by saying is uh, it's been a pretty crazy last couple of weeks in fantasy, whether it was, um, you know, we're, we're done with the buys now, whether it was an unbelievable last two weeks from Christian McCaffrey, the untimely release of Kareem Hunt, or whether you want to talk about some other things going on, specifically Zach Ertz with the receptions, all-time tight end receptions mark in very, very uh short order he may have that so a lot of go things going on over the past few weeks that we haven't had a chance to discuss so i do want to take this opportunity here at the top of the show and take a look at our top 20 overall players first of all um i do we're going to break this up into two maybe smaller pieces here and we're going to start off with our top 10 and we're going to go around the table talk about the top 10 and then we will discuss why those individuals landed inside of our top 10 uh, Parker, we're going to start with you. Uh, let's uh, go over some of your top 10 players. Well, I picked the top 20, but I didn't put them in any specific order. But my top 10 are Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, Drew Brees, Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas, Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, DeAndre Hopkins, Saquon Barkley, and Travis Kelsey. I think you have some very good people there. Very, very close to what I have. So I think this is going to be interesting going around the table. Dylan, what was your top 10? All right, top 10 from 10 to 1. Uh, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Antonio Brown, Ezekiel Elliott, Christian McCaffrey, Adam Thielen, Tyreek Hill, and Todd Gurley. I think, uh, again, we might be in the same situation as we were last time, uh, around the board, Gurley at one, but I'm, I don't want to preemptively say that, Brian. Who do you have in your top yeah, 10? Yeah, uh, very similar. Uh, I put Kelsey at 10, Barkley at 9, Elliott at 8, uh, Drew Brees at 7, Tyree Kill at 6, yeah. Keenan Allen at 5, Alvin Kamara 4, Antonio Brown 3, Gordon 2, Gurley 1. I have Zeke at 10, Breeze at 9, Tyreek Hill at 8, Michael Thomas at 7, Barkley at 6, Christian McCaffrey, which is somebody that I didn't hear in anybody else's top. Well, we had one other uh, in the top 10. Kamara at 4, Mahomes at 3, probably the highest you'll ever see me rank a quarterback. Antonio Brown at 2, and Gurley at 1. So, obviously, Dylan, you did have McCaffrey. Uh, I do want to chat with you guys for a second about uh, McCaffrey's efforts here. So now, when we are talking about this, we are talking about PPR scoring here. Um, basically, this guy has been over 20 points all but three times this season, including, and this is his last five weeks, 32, 36, 17, 46, 31. Uh, and, and you're talking to a guy that was not a McCaffrey believer at the beginning of the season. How can you not have this guy in your top 10, Brian and Parker? Yeah, honestly, I, I, McCaffrey's a very good player. He's, the, he's pretty much a hybrid receiver, running back. 
I not having much media exposure to the Carolina Panthers, I think, has a lot to do with that for me. Well, and the and the Panthers have really kind of fallen apart. Yeah. They've fallen down to six and six. They don't really outside of Cam and McCaffrey, though, they don't have much else. Now Olsen's out for the year, which we'll talk about here shortly. Devin's hurt. There's not much else going on in Carolina. And I guess maybe your only argument here is can he withstand the the volume that he's getting? I mean, he he, but at the same time, he hasn't had he had twenty eight carries in week three. Since then, he hasn't top seventeen, and over the last four weeks, he's averaging thirteen. He's he's getting a lot of uh, run in the passing game, but I I don't know. I, I'm just high on Christian McCaffrey at this point. Um, and here's an important note that we're going to make sure that I note on many of these players that we talk about their fantasy schedule. You don't get much better of a fantasy schedule than McCaffrey has. Cleveland, the Saints, and Atlanta. Three teams who struggle to stop the run. Three teams who struggle to stop the pass. Not good defense, though New New Orleans did play well against Dallas. Uh, I don't see... I I see that as being an upside play with McCaffrey. And certainly if you're playing daily... uh, McCaffrey, he's going to be expensive, but you know if he's putting up 40 points, that's worth it. Yeah. So who had uh, Antonio Brown in the top 10? I have him at six. I have him at four. Okay, so three. So we do have him all within the top ten, and I think that that's a, a, awesome because I mean, even just on Sunday's game, ten for one fifty four with a touchdown, thirty one points, basically has had his worst game. I mean, worst game in PPR scoring, fifteen points. I mean, you know, that's that's my kind of my knock on Kelsey. I know most of you guys have Kelsey in your top ten. My only, and trust me, I have Kelsey at thirteen. But to be honest with you guys, Kelsey has had some weeks where he was not nearly as consistent as that number one tight end that you drafted him as. Well, now you're going to want him all the time because whoever well, whoever has him is going to be very fortunate with the whole Kareem Hunt thing happening. It, it's hard to see how that plays out, I really, because they were already passing at such a high volume anyway. Now, he was getting a lot of the looks out of the backfield, so maybe some of those looks do go to Kelsey. Um, now, Kelsey has had double-digit fantasy points in every week except for week one when he had that one catch for six yards. Um, but he's had a 10. He's had an 11. Um, not to say that he's not having a great season because he's eclipsed the 100-yard mark five times, including two straight, and it had, r- comes in week nine, had 99 yards. So he's definitely a great tight end. My only issue is just his lack of consistency, though in that high-powered offense— I can imagine Kelsey continuing to having a big week. Now, here's my only problem with Kelsey here. Look at who he has as far as in the playoffs. Baltimore, one of the top defenses in the league. The Chargers, who have played well defensively, and at Seattle in a Week 16 matchup. Now, are the Chiefs going to be favored in that game? Of course. But at the same time, having Seattle, playing Seattle on the road, your fantasy football championship... I mean, I would have pause there. Obviously, you're going to play him if you have him. So, yeah. Kelsey was one I found interesting in there. One that I want to know is why doesn't anyone have Adam Thielen? He's putting up enormous amount of points, except for last week he had a little bit of a down week. But he's putting up crazy amount of points, and I have him at my flex receiver. I think, so. I think what's interesting about Thielen is that he is in an offense that really just hasn't gotten going. Now, Thielen is insane, the numbers that he's put up. Not only did he start the season with eight 100-yard games, he's had a touchdown in nine of 12 games. Uh, Cousins looks for him, although in Sunday night's New England game, he was basically kept off the score sheet. Really, the only news there was was him getting into a cursing match with Bill Belichick, which I thought was very interesting. Smart but, of him to do. But I think that the problem here for me, and you're, you're talking to somebody who I just recently made a trade in a different league. I got Thielen and I traded away Diggs and Robert Woods because for me, I would rather have the better player than people who I might have to sit on my bench. My biggest issue here is Diggs. Diggs is con- always consistent. Rudolph's been playing well. Dalvin Cook now back in the lineup. He had eight catches on Sunday night. It just doesn't seem like, and, and to be honest, Minnesota's offense isn't really looking like what we thought it would. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, again, obviously you're in a situation here where, where any of these guys you're starting, no-brainer. I don't think it's it's that, but I do think that Thielen is very interesting. I do have Thielen at 18. Um, I, I'm not quite as high on him as as you, but I, I, I like him. I think he's really turned the corner this year, and obviously Cousins is looking for him. Any surprises you see, Parker? I do have Adam Thielen on my list at 12, but probably... 
in my top 20 that people probably don't have on this list that I have is Eric Ebron. Like, yes, he had a couple had games Ebron. where he didn't get receiving yards, but even with um, Doyle being back for the Colts, I think Ebron is still sharing the load at that tight end position. I think that's a good segue going into our second um, half of the top 20 is what's interesting there is that Doyle is now out for the season. Uh, Doyle did come back. He had a couple of games, but Ebron's just been so hard to figure. The guy, though, has 11 touchdowns this year. I mean, it's it's unbelievable how much luck has been looking to him. Now, of course, he didn't have 10 for 81 against Jacksonville in Week 13. Didn't get into the end zone, but that's because... No one got in the end zone. The Colts didn't get into the end zone. Luck's three, three touchdown games consecutive snapped by the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I guess you just kind of thought that they would just roll over here, uh, and they showed up. So I think that there's something to be said for that. Ebron, I do like at tight end. I would, at this point, are we putting Ebron ahead of Gronk? Yeah, because there's one thing, Eric Ebron could stay healthy. Gronk seems like he has a lot of injury issues. You know, it was funny. I was listening to some uh, different NFL insiders this week, and one of the things that they were saying is is they've been holding Gronk out of practice a lot because he doesn't understand what it means to go half speed. Yeah. He, he's one speed only, and even in practice, he's like hurting himself and hurting potentially hurting other players. Yeah. So I think that that's – I mean, are, is that really where we are? If, if, if you would have flashed back to nine months ago – could you have ever imagined a situation outside of an injury to one of the two players that we would be sitting here saying that Eric Ebron is a starter over Gronk? No, I think I think people still look at Gronk as like the best tight end because of his name. I think that I think his past has a lot to do with it, and the fact he still plays with Tom Brady. I mean, Tom Brady is the best quarterback in the NFL don't, right now. Don't I mean, right now, Tom I mean, Brady is not the best. I mean, quarterback. Tom Brady's the greatest year. quarterback he, of all time. You can't uh, deny. Okay, so there's a different. Uh, listen, listen. Listen, there's a difference between being the greatest quarterback of all time and the greatest quarterback now. I mean, if you in, were, it, in Joe Montana's last season, who was arguably one of the greatest of all times, you certainly wouldn't put him probably even in the top 20 when he was with the Chiefs that one season, even though they made the playoffs. Brady's top top three. Yeah, top 10 Jeter of all time, maybe. <laughs> well, I, and that's the thing Manning's here. Manning's better than Brady. <laughs> Who's God. better than Brady? Peyton Manning. No. Certainly not in it. Eli Manning. Certainly. You know, here's I got to share this with you guys. I, I don't know if you caught this in the broadcast last night, but with one of the touchdowns, I believe it was in the third quarter, Tom Brady now has the most touchdown passes, including playoffs, of anyone. And I thought that that was kind of interesting. Now, obviously, Brady's been in the playoffs you know, more games than a lot of these other guys. But I thought that that was pretty interesting as well. Now, bringing it back to fantasy, we are the fantasy football strategy guy here, gentlemen. Where would you even rank Brady as far as quarterbacks going into the playoffs? Let's say you had Brady and name any one of the other top five. Where is that line for where we would start Brady? I mean, you're not starting him over Patrick Mahomes. I think, I think we can agree on that at least, right? Not going to start him over Jared Goff. Okay, so there's another is Jared Goff. Let's uh, let's take a look at the these on the season. Let's see. Let's take a look at on the season points for quarterbacks right now. Patrick Mahomes one, Breeze at two, Matt Ryan at three, Cam Newton, Jared Goff, Roethlisberger, Luck, Rivers, Trubisky, Watson, Cousins, Wilson, then Brady. You're looking at like fifteen for you. I'm just going to go around. Where are you drawing? This is just strictly total points, total fantasy points. Where are you putting Tom Brady in? Again, envision you have any of these other quarterbacks plus Tom Brady. At what point are you starting Tom Brady going forward? Where, where are we drawing the line here? I'm going to start with Parker. I'm going to say where Andrew Luck is, I'll start Brady. But there's quarterback, maybe even Ben Roethlisberger. Because Roethlisberger, yes, he has the yards of thrown, But he throws too many interceptions in one game that could cost many points. So you're playing Brady over Rodgers, Luck, and Roethlisberger. Definitely over Rodgers this season, yeah. Yeah, Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers are not connecting at all. They just fired their head coach, and they're not having the season they were anticipated to have. Rodgers, this year, 20 touchdowns, one interception, and they are 4-7-1. and one. It's pretty incredible. All right, Dylan, where, where do you put Brady in? I would only put him over... Um, Mitch Trubisky, I would not put him over Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers is a points machine. And two with Trubisky, keeping in mind that these numbers are considering that he missed two games. 
So that's well. This I think the season stats don't necessarily update till everybody's done. Uh, so we're we are doing this on Monday, going into Week 14. So we have not seen the results of the Washington and Philadelphia matchup on Monday night. So we will point that out. Brian, where are you putting Brady in here? The only I could see him being over Deshaun Watson. So you're still he's still then outside of the top 12. Basically, he's on the bench for almost any team. And I'm. Well, so all right, right now he would be at eleven because Trubisky. I would put him over Trubisky. Okay. I don't know. How, definitely not Russell. Russell Wilson's playing a really good season this year. It's a he's, silent year. He's so up and down too. I mean, at least Brady is at least consistent. Russell Wilson. I, I'm not. I will say he's had multiple touchdowns in eight straight games. So, and he's not done less than eighteen points uh, basically since week four. So I, I would say Wilson there. For me, I think. That's perfect. That's exactly where I would have him. In fact, I would start outside of maybe Trubisky because I think his numbers are inflated a little bit. I would. Pr- I'm fine with starting all of these other people over Brady. Even I, so, so that kind of shoots a little of holes in your argument at this I, point, I Brian. Think, I think Cam's not. I think. Well, I think Cam's gonna be. Believe it or not, if they if they're eliminated, well, they're not gonna be eliminated from the playoffs. My guess is until the last week of the season. Right now, they're just. I think they're looking right into the playoffs. Uh, they're like the first or second team out, and Cam's on a hundred percent healthy. No, and Cam's in fact, I'm reading four a, interceptions last. I'm reading a report here yesterday that Coach Ron Rivera said Newton's surgically repaired shoulder was a little bit sore. They couldn't even put Cam in for the final play to throw the deep pass. Cam said he couldn't make it down the field. So if Cam's out, if you're going like at that point, so that would take up to actually what nine? Because I said he would be uh, he would be over two mm-hmm. others. Because I said he would be over Trubisky, and who was the other one I said? Oh, uh, Deshaun Watson. I think I, I still think that that's where we're at. So I mean, your point that Brady, but, your point that Brady is the best quarterback. Bra- Brady, I, I I'm not saying that I disagree with you as far as his resume goes. I'm saying this year I'm, he's he's not a starter anymore, and I don't think he should be drafted that way going forward if he plays who, a couple more years. Who, look who's right under Brady. That's the most impressive person. Dak is right under Brady, and then followed closely by Andy Dalton, who's out for the season. Yep. Eli Manning. Ryan Fitzpatrick still crazy numbers that he James, had. Those James played good yesterday. Yeah, and I think he's going to be there the rest of the season. Talk about a disappointing season for Carson Wentz and Matthew Stafford. Um, Stafford on the year seventeen touchdowns, ten picks. Wentz sixteen. Now he once didn't miss a couple weeks there, but Wentz sixteen touchdowns, six picks. That's not what you were signing up for. Stafford Stafford doesn't have this. Do you think that team is like he has help there? I mean, Golden Tate's gone. Carry on. Carry on Johnson's a pretty good running back. He's he's hurt. Marvin Jones is hurt. Ebron left. Their defense isn't good. Their defense hasn't been good for years. So uh, I think that's very interesting. Let's move right along to our this back half of our top 20. Parker, did you want to go ahead and just refresh us on who the back half of your top 20 is? Um, I, at 11, I have Juju Smith-Schuster, then Adam Thielen, Eric Ebron, James Conner, Larry Fitzgerald, Alvin Kamara, Andrew Luck, Philip Rivers, Jared Goff, and Brandon Cooks. I think you've got some really good players there. I would pause, and we will talk about this under the injury. James Conner with a high ankle sprain. So to me, if we're t- talking top 20 overall players going forward, I, I don't have James Conner now. If, if he would have gotten through that game with no injuries, I probably would have had James Conner in my top 20. I want to know what, what, what got Larry in there. Well, to be honest, I know that guy gets receptions. I, but I mean, I know Fitz hasn't had the best season, but his touchdown rate this year is excellent. To be honest, Larry has not had the best year, but he certainly had, you know, just in the last six weeks, he's had five touchdowns. So at least things are trending in the right direction. I maybe it's who else do they have, Parker? I mean, yeah, that's that, I throw because they they're not helping David Johnson in the backfield. It, it seems like David Johnson's not having the year. Because he can't get any running yards, but yeah, they who else do they have? They they literally only have Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk. I think we will mention later in the waiver wire editions. He's stepped up a, a, a little bit, yeah. uh, but maybe it's just for them. It's just a lack of offense. The John, David Johnson hasn't gotten much going this year. Probably one of the biggest disappointments in all fantasy football. But Fitz, 
he's probably right there. But I guess when you drafted him, that's what you're drafting for. You Rose- know, that 10 to 15 points every week. Yeah, and I mean, having a rookie quarterback, Josh Rosen, I mean, development. his development's not going, I don't think, as fast as they thought it would be. I wonder why Fitzgerald even came back this year. Like, oh, you mean like retirement or yeah. just wanted to be on a different yeah retirement? Because, I mean, I guess they thought Bradford was, I mean, coming yeah. into the season, going to be a decent quarterback. And, that and just they didn't released him. And I'm surprised that the Skins didn't give him a call. Yeah. I don't know if they'd be on the hook for that salary or, or what that, the deal is. That is a lot of money. I know, but if they're, they have a shot at the playoffs. And they are. They're in the playoffs right now. I don't think that Colt McCoy is, is that poor. But again, we're, we're saying this before we see the Monday night game, so maybe we should hold judgment for him to have a full week. Um, Dylan, let's talk about the back half of your top 20. All right, so at 11, I have DeAndre Hopkins. 12, I have OBJ. 13, Travis Kelsey. 14, Zach Ertz. 15, Patrick Mahomes. 16, Jared Goff. 17, I also had James Conner. 18, Devontae Adams. 19, Juju Smith. And 20, Drew Brees. And uh, Brian, back half of your top 20. Um, Yeah, I had Ertz in there. Thomas, Julio, Odell, DeAndre. I put Kittle in there. I like George Kittle. Again, that's another situation where they literally don't. They're like third or fourth string receivers putting up crazy numbers yeah. now. Because and what's do you guys know anything about this Marquise Goodwin situation? Mm-mm. Basically, he's missed the last two weeks for personal reasons. Interesting. And there's no clarification on where he is, what's going on. I mean, and San Francisco 49ers is like an open audition to many <laughs> players, it seems. And it's terrible because they've got some good pieces. Brita looks good, yeah. although he's hurt now. No one even knows what's going on, to be honest with you. Brito's basically suited up as an emergency running back yesterday. Yeah. The starter, Wilson, who had a huge game, he ended up getting hurt. Burita had to come on. He ended up re-injuring himself. Goodwin's gone for the who knows for personal reasons at yeah. this point. And Pierre Garçon's been hurt most yeah. of the season. So really, Kittle is it. I mean, that's got to be your argument. There is they really don't have a whole heck of a lot else going on as far as offense at all. I, so I, I I think that's interesting, Brian. I put Patty Ice in there too. Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Brandon Cooks. I put both of them, him and Robert Woods, in there. And this is the first time I didn't put either of them in my top 20, and that, to me, is because of the balls just being spread all over the place. Even with Cooper Cup being out, yeah. Josh Reynolds coming in. Josh Reynolds is a nice piece to that team. I, I think, too, that that might be a very interesting waiver wire pickup as well, but I don't want to step on anyone's toes there. Uh, my back half of my top 20, eerily similar to Dylan's. DeAndre Hopkins at 11, Julio Jones at 12, Kelsey 13, Ertz at 14. I do have Melvin Gordon here. We will talk about his injury shortly. Keenan Allen at 16. Here's one that I didn't hear anybody with, Dalvin Cook. And I'm saying Dalvin Cook because I'm talking about going forward over the next three weeks. Dalvin Cook had a big game uh, against the Patriots, had eight catches in a PPR league. I was very surprised to see him catching the ball in the backfield. Also have Thielen there. I am super high on Andrew Luck, even though he had that poor game against Jacksonville. Remember, Jacksonville was the number one ranked defense last year. So, yes, they, it hasn't come together this year, but I guess you can give Luck a little bit of a pass for having a poor game. I just hope he doesn't follow up with that in the playoffs. And, of course, Juju Smith-Schuster. That's my debut appearance for Juju in the top 20. I do have a couple people that I want to chat about. Um, I put a couple people not making the top 20 um, for specific reasons we'll talk about. Then I put up a couple people on the rise that I'd like to chat with you guys about. First of all, Odell Beckham. Um, Dylan, I know that you had Beckham in your top 20. Parker, did you have Beckham in your top 20? I did not, but if we had 25, he'll be on the outskirts of the top 20. Odell, uh, definitely. You have him in your top 20? Definitely. Let's okay. So Parker and I were going to take one side. You guys take the other. You have him as a top twenty play. Why? I mean, it's Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, he hasn't had the best year. Uh, him and Eli have maybe had a little bit of a falling out. But if you think about it, the man can not only catch, but he can throw the ball forty yards downfield like it's nothing. That really did help out his fantasy day. That's for sure. Yesterday, because he's, he's two for two for one hundred and six yards and two touchdowns. I think that's better than Eli's stats on the season. <laughs> Well, put him in under center. Um, so you, basically, you're just going he's, off track record. He's an exciting. Point. He's just an exciting player to watch. I mean, I, I enjoy watching him. 
Brian, what was your thought? What's your thoughts on um, Odell Beckham? Why well, do you have him in your top twenty? Well, I take Odell Beckham every season because he's for PPR. He does a he does a pretty decent job. I mean, his yards. He he's usually a down the field player, and Eli likes to hit him on the slant. Nineteen and a half points he averages, which isn't a bad number for your wide receiver. But one thing I would say, he hasn't had more since the bye. So the last four weeks, he hasn't had more than five catches. He hasn't had more than 85 yards. Now, he has scored four touchdowns in the last four, but he's trending the wrong way. He had, prior to the bye, in four weeks, he had receptions 8, 6, 8, and 8, and he had over 130 yards three of four weeks. I I guess my problem, and Parker, feel free to, to back me up, and then we can maybe talk a little bit more about this. I guess my problem with Beckham is as the Giants are playing better, Beckham is playing worse. Well, I, I think, well, he's being double teamed, but like that Eagles game, what was his stats against Philly? Five for 85. No touchdowns. No touchdowns. Yeah, he was double teamed. Uh, but he's going to be double teamed all the time. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, he's going to get you that solid 15 to 20 points a game. I think the the, the thing that you want to look at for Beckham, last three weeks, going into the playoffs at Washington, Tennessee, at Indy. Three look, say what you want about Washington. Their defense has played well this year. They have a good secondary. Tennessee's defense is their strength. Indy, I, I you could have worse matchups than that, but Indy has played well defensively this year. I'm just not sold on them. I would have I agree with Parker, I would have him in my top twenty five. I would if we were redrafting today for the rest of the season. I'd he, he's a second rounder to me, maybe even early third, but I would much rather. I mean, I have him you at would like much rather have Amari. You'd rather much have Amari Cooper. I think <laughs> it's hard to not. It's hard to not agree with that. I mean, if you just look at, at what's been going on. But I mean, when you're looking at just me alone, I have Brown. I have Michael Thomas, Tyree Kill, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, Thielen, Juju Smith-Schuster. I'd probably put Diggs in front of him. Probably Devonte Adams in front of him. You're talking about. I'm, we're looking at like the tenth receiver here. At Mike this Evans. Point. Mike e- Mike Evans is is tough. Mike Evans is tough to figure because everyone in that offense is catching balls. Did you say AJ Green? Well, I didn't. Injuries, right? But. AJ's AJ Green's hurt, or he probably would be above Odell. Um, I don't buy in when we're talking the last three weeks of the season. I don't buy into to history. I buy into who are they playing, how are they playing, and to me, Odell Beckham is is really. I mean, he's he's had double digit fantasy points every week since week three, so it's not like he's letting you down. But I don't know. What do you think, Parker? I, I personally think it's because of the Giants with the new addition of Saquon Barkley. Because Saquon Barkley is carrying his load with the Giants. Yeah. and Except against the Eagles where they don't give him the ball. Though Barkley did injure himself in the game yesterday. I know he came back, so I don't think it's anything that anyone's worried about. But if Barkley would go down, I would give Beckham a bump. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. I feel like since the Giants drafted Barkley at the second pick in the draft, they're, he's their new one of their talented stars, and don't get me wrong, Odell is a ta- and I'm not a fan of Odell, but he is a talented wide receiver. I will say that. But this year, it seems like Saquon Barkley is Eli's security blanket when he has to throw the ball. Because if you also see when he rushes a lot of scrimmage yards, Barkley does get his share as passing yards too as a running back. A couple of more people that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, I mean, let's talk about some people on the rise uh, that didn't make, I don't believe, any of our top 20. Um, number one player I want to talk about, Philip Lindsay. Uh, how, he, how, how he has not made any of us, and I'm myself included, how he has not made any of our top 20 lists, I don't know. I just want to read off some stats here. Oh my gosh. I mean, this guy's, his numbers are ridiculous. Outside of a two-point effort in week three, he's had double-digit fantasy points in every single other week. He's eclipsed 100 yards each of the past two weeks, and in the last three weeks has five touchdowns. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. I mean, it's really quite amazing to me that at this point, there's not much, many other people trending upward you, in the way Philip Lindsay is. Have you heard his story, like how he went undrafted? He's, he's a hometown guy. He thought he was going to get drafted by Denver because he was told by several people, Denver's focused on you, doesn't get drafted. Every team reaches out to him the day after draft day or after the draft. He ends up still signing with his hometown team. I think that's great. For, and he got and uh, Denver offered him less money, and he still took it. And I'm going to back you up with that, Brian, because when the, they played the Steelers, they did say about that yeah. story that he says he doesn't want to play for him because they didn't draft him. And his mom, his mom actually told yeah. him, "What are you doing? Go! You're getting an offer from your hometown team. Go for it." And and 
the the person that came into the season that burned Royce a Freeman. lot of people, Royce Freeman. Royce uh, he Freeman. hasn't done any. Is he same, even playing? Same with that dude for uh, Green Bay, the running back. I mean, it does say uh, Royce Freeman still is playing. He had uh, twelve carries, forty eight yesterday. Did fumble, so that's not helping his cause. Um, Lindsay's averaging like double his points. I know. So Philip Lindsay to me, guys, I think he's right up there for to for me with Dalvin Cook, Melvin Gordon. I would love to have Philip Lindsay, and I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't make our top twenty list, guys. With Philip Lindsay is, I know, in Professor Miller in the one league we're in, you actually traded me Philip Lindsay for Antonio Brown and them, and at first I'm like, I don't know who Philip Lindsay is, but as I watched him play, he he racked up some serious points for me. Well, I think you got the better of that trade. Who else did I? Who you got? Some you got one of my wide receivers as well. Yeah, I think you gave me Mike Evans yeah. too. I'm pretty sure. No, I think or I still have it? Evans. I'll have to look. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Lindsay is one of those guys that I really think is going to have a very bright future. Another guy that I wanted to chat with you guys about, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, and why I bring him up is because this guy has. I don't know, over the last four weeks, leads the NFL in target share. Uh, It's pretty incredible. Now, while he did have uh, not the best game, and in fact, probably his worst game of the season against Cincinnati, listen to who he has. Emmanuel Sanders, playoffs, at San Francisco, at home for Cleveland, and at Oakland. Mm -hmm. Is there a better schedule? So we're talking about Lindsay. So that's also Lindsay's schedule. Is there a better schedule the last three games fantasy playoffs than Denver has? I have them. And I think, interestingly enough, and I'll bring this up later, Cortland Sutton also an intriguing ad, although he's actually trending downward in the ownership percentage. So anybody you're thinking here that that maybe didn't crack the the top 20, Dylan, that that you're thinking, why did this person not get in? Kenny Galladay. You know, it's definitely look at his stats. He puts up a good amount of points. I have him on my list as well, and I'll tell you, I think that's another situation of who else is there. You know what I mean? As Brian mentioned earlier, Tate is gone. Carry on Johnson hurt. Jones out for the season. Although even this week, again, this is a guy. This is one of his worst weeks of the season. And to be honest, one th- one knock on Galladay is it's boom or bust. Basically, out of the last eight, seven games, he's had only two double-digit, three double-digit fantasy points in PPR. And I think what's even more troubling to people is in his last seven games, he only has two touchdowns. And you would think, I guess that's just because Detroit's so bad. But I like him, too. I think if you have a keeper or dynasty league, Galladay is definitely a guy you want to want to take a look at. Did you uh, did you watch Jeopardy that night? No. You saw that, though, right? I don't think so. Oh, you Did you gentlemen see that? The Jeopardy um, thing where, I have not where it, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not an old man, yeah. Um, where they brought up uh, this NFC or this NFL team is in the NFC North and hasn't has never made the Super Bowl and probably won't until the year 2030 or something. <laughs> and then he, and he goes, "What is the Detroit Lions?" <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I do want to continue. The last thing I want to point out: the biggest bust for me, as far as somebody who's really just fallen down my list every time we do this, is David Johnson. And again, I think that's back to the same argument as Fitzgerald. What is going on in Arizona? I mean, they they definitely pulled out a big win uh, against the Packers, but man, uh, how David Johnson was consensus top five pick earlier this year. And I mean, I'm at the end of the season. ESPN does a bunch of um, they do some articles about hey, if you drafted this person in the first round, you had a blank percent to make the playoffs. I would imagine if you pick David Johnson in the first round, the odds of you making the playoffs are slim to none, unless you had a just on fire draft the rest of the way. So. Well, before we get out of this segment and come right back with uh, some of the injuries and waiver wire additions, we're going to come to Brian. Brian, can we have one piece of advice uh, for playoff strategy for the players that were listening? I put check, check uh, their, their team schedule. Check who they're playing and what how they did previously against them. Well, and that's an, an excellent point. I mean, that's one thing we've been doing here on the podcast today. But just, just looking at Denver, like now that I'm thinking I might – want to play my guys on yeah. Denver based I mean their schedule how could it get any better yeah um Dylan um this one could kind of be tough to figure out but you uh look at weaker teams and see if you can trade some of your bench players for one of their uh, stronger players being that the weaker teams probably aren't going to make the playoffs now I will point out trade, that trade deadline is in most leagues yeah um typically in a standard ESPN league and on, on certainly many other sites as well at the week, the Wednesday after the final bye week is over, is the trade deadline. However, you can change that. So commissioners, something that 
if you think you should still be able to trade even up and through till the end of the regular season, you can change that. So something maybe for next year, you may want to maybe move that tra- trade yeah. deadline back. I'm in a league, though, where you can just make trades anytime you want. You can make trades in the offseason, so, which is very interesting because hmm. it's a keeper league. Yeah. So if, if let's say I have three guys that are worth keeping, but I can only keep two, yeah. I might trade two of them for one of the other players. Yeah. So that is rare, but... I think that is true. Now, you do have to be careful, though, with, with some collusion. I've, I've heard of people, oh, well, I'm out of it. I'll just trade you my best players, and, and you give me back a scrub, um, which I've heard before, but uh, hopefully that, that, that doesn't have to happen. And, of course, I do, I do want to say, Dylan, to your point, make sure you're checking the transactions because you can vote yeah. on trades. And the problem that I've had as commissioner in some of these leagues is that people don't vote. So these yeah. bogus trades go through, and unless you know you want to give the commissioner all the power to cancel these trades, you know you got to make sure you're voting on these. So good, good advice there, Dylan Parker. Can we have a, a piece of advice? I say if you are a playoff push in fantasy, obviously I'm not. My fantasy went down the hill. But if you're pushing for fantasy, don't take your games lightly. If you have a star player who is not playing up to his standards and you trust a bench player, don't be afraid to put them in the lineup. I think that's a very good point, too, because I, I do think we do have to spend some more time on matchup here, <coughs> especially if you've got some really good players on your bench. Take a look at some of the research that ESPN offers, and really all it is is just changing the filter, and it shows you where the defenses are, and you can do some other deep digging into how some of these individual teams play against certain positions as well. Mine is very simple. You must, under every circumstance, handcuff your top players. By that I mean, if, for example, I'm going to give you a perfect example. James Conner, right? James Conner goes out. In most cases, we don't even know who their backup is. But now that he is hurt, the number one waiver claim this week, I guarantee, will be Jalen Samuels, who's his backup. If you would have already had him on your team, and he was probably at 0 or 1% owned, you wouldn't have to go pick him up off waivers. So to me, instead of having six wide receivers going into the playoffs when all your buys are through, pick up your handcuffs. Because in a situation like, look at what happened to Kareem Hunt. I was talking to several people this week who were mad because they didn't have get Spencer Ware. And I said, well, why didn't you already have Spencer Ware as it was? And I've also heard people talking about, oh, this season's lost because I drafted Levy on Bell. Well, why didn't you also draft James Conner? If you would have drafted Bell and Conner, you could have got Conner for like a 10th round pick. You wouldn't have had to worry about it because you'd have a number one running back anyway. So I, I'm surprised that more people don't handcuff their, their top players, especially their running backs. Um, so I would definitely say, if you have Zeke, pick up Rod Smith. Uh, now, you certainly can't pick up everybody's backups. Uh, you know, Kamara and Ingram split time. A lot of people do split time. But if, you know, your number one backs, you have to make sure, like if you have Chris Carson, pick up Rashad Penny. Uh, so there's, you have to drop some of this dead weight that you're not going to play. Pick up your handcuffs. All right, well, hey, we'll be right back with the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we will be right back to talk about important injuries and waiver wire additions for the playoffs. This is Parker Rose, and you are listening to the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide. You can Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Strategy Guide. I'm sitting here with Parker Rose, Dylan Kleintop, and Brian Christiana. This is Paul Miller, and we are going to chat the rest of the podcast about some important injuries, who you can pick up to replace some of those individuals with these injuries, and we're going to take a look at the waiver wire going into the fantasy playoffs. All right, gentlemen, uh, I want you to go around, and I want you to select one person. As we mentioned earlier, Week 13 was brutal for many, many teams. Uh, Just watching the crawl... uh, Denver alone. Now, most of these guys were offensive or defensive linemen, so not really, you know, an issue for fantasy. But I think Denver had like six or seven guys that went out for injury. Houston lost several offensive linemen. I mean, it was just like people were dropping like flies. So I'd like you guys to go around and select one person who was either injured this week or injured recently and talk about how you might replace those people. So I'm going to start with Parker. Parker, pick somebody who was injured this week and talk how you might replace those individuals. Well, I'm going to pick from the Cincinnati Bengals, A.J. Green. As we may know, before last week, he did come off that same foot injury, and this week alone, he injured that foot again. So, And that is definitely a big blow to the Bengals' offense. Besides Joe Mixon in the backfield, A.J. Green's probably one of the top receivers on that team. So 
when it comes to replacing wide receiver, I will still stick in Cincinnati because I think Tyler Boyd is getting his share of the ball. And also um, Ross, I think they're both getting a share of the ball. So don't count those two wide receivers out from the Bengals. They could pick you up some good fantasy points. So Tyler Boyd is interesting here, Parker. Um, he did have six for 97 against Denver in a loss. Um, he's he's gotten double-digit fantasy points in all but four games this season, and that was even with A.J. Green. I envision Boyd, his role continuing, but again, with Andy Dalton out, he's now with a, basically a rookie quarterback in Driscoll. So it's hard to say what he's going to do. To me, I've been a, one of the biggest John Ross lovers. Now, he w- he has had a great deal, a uh, number of touchdowns. He's had five touchdowns this week. He was injured for four games but Ross, his best game of the season, three catches. So even though he's getting an elevated you know, time on the field, he's not necessarily turning that into production. For me, I'm sticking with Tyler Boyd here. But I do think that that's an excellent, uh, an excellent commentary, Parker. Sure. Dylan, who's the uh, person that you're going to be taking a look at? He's not a big player, but he's an, he's an important player for his team, Sammy Watkins. Um, he's been out for... Couple weeks now, I have him. On, I had him on my team in my flex. He put up a decent amount of points. Um, some weeks, some weeks not. But a player I would replace for him, and he's kind of an under the radar wide receiver from a different team. He has two good receivers in front of him. Adam Humphreys. He puts up decent points. He gets a lot of catches. He's kind of like the slot, the Wes Welker. He gets a lot of points. So I would definitely look at replacing um, Sammy Watkins with uh, Adam Adam Humphreys. Humphreys is interesting, and one of the issues that I have with all of these guys on Tampa is they do have such talent at wide receiver, whether it's Chris Godwin, Deshaun Jackson, Mike Evans. O.J. Howard is hurt, but Cameron Brait back in the fold. That's my only problem with Humphreys. Uh, I like the volume that he gets, but it's so tough. To, and they're a bad team. Now they do put up points. They're a bad team, but and he's like maybe their fourth option. Now Deshaun Jackson is hurt. No word on on what his status is at this point, but I do like that. I would point out as well, Chris Conley on Kansas City, only 13% owned, looked pretty good, and if they're putting up 40 points every week, they absolutely can sustain a second wide receiver. Also, with Kareem Hunt being out, I like Conley even when Watkins comes back because Watkins has not been healthy, um, has really kind of disappointed. I mean, I guess he still has a shot at at 1,000 yards on the season, but at this point, he's missed three games, one catch in another game, two catches in a, th- in a fourth game. He's just not consistent. I, I don't know what about Watkins for me. I would probably just drop him at this point. Yeah. I, I, there's not going to be a week that I'm feeling good about starting him. And again, as we mentioned earlier in the program, Baltimore, the Chargers, and Seattle in their playoffs. For me, I'm done with Sammy Watkins. And it's not his fault. He's such a talented guy, and he has all these injuries. All right, Brian, to you. Take a look at somebody who was injured this week. Well, uh, he actually got injured in last Thursday night's game. I'm uh, Beasley. Cole Beasley got hurt. I think a good person. Uh, Tavon Austin is coming back. Alan Hearns is Alan Hearns is still there. But Beasley being injured, I think that could be a real big impact for the tight ends. Uh, Jarwin is pretty good. Um, Amari Cooper's obviously playing the way he is. And Michael Gallup, really good player. Gallup's a guy I drafted in almost every league, and he just has yet to put it together. I really like him long term. Not sure. Let's see what the Cowboys have the rest of the season. So you have Philly. Indianapolis, Tampa Bay, um, yeah, because most teams are, are done by week 16. So he's definitely stepped it up a little bit. He's he's gotten targets. I mean, he's caught a pass in every game, 5 for 76 against New Orleans in that 13-10 victory. Um, but Gallup, I think, could be interesting if Beasley's out. Yeah. What's the prognosis on Beasley? Beasley is questionable right now. Okay. Yeah. So we'll find out a lot more later but in the, the week. The the injury, like the whole situation with the Cowboys is looking really good because Sean Lee's supposed to be coming back for Philly and Tavon Austin. So, I mean, that linebacker core already is pretty solid. And with Sean Lee coming back, that'll even make it better. One person I wanted to bring up, and this happened late Sunday, is James Conner. I know we already talked about this a little bit. High ankle sprain. They, initially, they said a leg contusion. And now it's being reported that it, it could be a high ankle sprain. Typically, that's going to be a multiple-week injury. And while Jalen Samuels is probably going to be caught, uh, picked up, Stephen Ridley, as Parker mentioned, also there, they'd probably, you'd think, pick up someone that could come in and, and at least play. I mean, they're right in the thick of a playoff hunt. 
Obviously, they're probably, especially depending on what happens, they might just not play Connor the rest of the year so he's ready for the playoffs. Who are you going to pick up at this point? I mean, Jalen Samuel, and I think we can talk about a couple of the other running back options in our waiver wire column. Now, we would be remiss without mentioning basically one of the fantasy MVPs this season. While not injured, Kareem Hunt no longer a member of the Chiefs and is without a team, although I argue at this point the Redskins might as well go and put a waiver claim on him. They've gotten so Ruben, much Ruben Foster. They've gotten so much bad press anyway from it. Why not just double down? But to be honest, uh, this was just as far out of left field as, as you could get. Such a great talent. Um, I, I believe if I read correctly, he said he's going to start his suspension immediately. So, you know, he's not going to wait and then get suspended. He's just going to hopefully get time served for a suspension. And, you know, we're not here to, to talk about the, the specific issues of what happened in that video. What we are here to talk about is how do you replace Kareem Hunt? I mean, I mean, Spencer Ware is no Kareem Hunt. No. Ware played well in week 13. Yeah. Damian Williams was the gentleman that I was looking at. He actually had he, – he only played 19 snaps – did have five carries for 38 yards, two catches for seven yards. Um, I, who knows at this point? Obviously, you'd want wear, but are you are you feeling comfortable about starting wear in your fantasy playoffs this week? No, no, no. And and especially he's not getting much out of the backfield. So who stands to increase then? I mean, Tyreek Hill is already in the top ten in scoring. Kelsey had a big week, but again, he you're starting him either way. Other than maybe the, the Conley that we talked about, maybe if Watkins comes back, who's going to take over some of his workload? Demetrius Harris. Yeah, he had a touchdown last or yesterday. So how about 19 targets to two tight ends for Kansas City? I wonder if that's how they're going to go. Because you got to figure a lot of what Hunt was doing was in the intermediate, out in the flat. Yeah. And maybe that's what they're trying to do. Hey, Andy Reid is a Hall of Fame coach. So I'm sure he's going to figure out how they, to. They talked about on first take today with all the, they talked about Belichick and Reid, what, what is keeping them in the lead. And they said that they're adjusting to how the, the lead is changing. That's what they said the problem with Mike McCarthy was. That's why Mike McCarthy, in all reality, got fired because he's he's not adjusting to how the game is. He's still back in 2010 when it, he's won the Super Bowl. So, mm-hmm. All right, well, gentlemen, we're going to move to our uh, next to last segment of the podcast today. We're going to talk about waiver wire edition. So, again, I want to go around, and we're just going to talk about a few people. I, I We typically want to try to keep these about 50% or below. There are several on my list that are 51, 52, 53%. So, uh, basically, if, if if any of these guys are out there, pick them up. Uh, so we're going to go to Parker. Parker, give me a number one. If it's up to you. Now, of course, it depends on need. But if you had just an empty roster spot, tell me the one person that you would go out and be picking up this week. I'm honestly going to go with Dak Prescott because, yes, he had – I'm not a Dallas fan, but Dak had a bad start to the season. But if you look at the past couple weeks, he put up 200 yards passing. He's finally clicking as the as the quarterback he was last year and the year before. Well, so, not last. Last season was the down one. You're, oh, yeah. I was the year yeah, before? Yeah, 2016, yeah. So I, I would say get Dak Prescott if you can. I like that. Uh, he is only owned in just 52% of leagues. Uh, if you had a, an, an Andy Dalton type, yeah. if you have somebody that's going into a tough schedule, maybe Prescott. My only concern with Prescott He's not even hit 300 yards on the season this year. Best two touchdowns, hasn't had a three-touchdown game, has two games with zero, and then another five with one. Uh, he does have some rushing. He had some big rushing last week, um, and he, he's still averaging 18.4 fantasy points. Uh, he is 15, quarterback 15 at this point, but I think he's got some upside that some other quarterbacks don't have. You know, your your Brady's, for example, your Tannehill, your potentially somebody like an Aaron Rodgers. Now, am I going to sit Aaron Rodgers for Prescott? Probably not, but I think it's at least worth talking about, you know? Next, we're going to come to Dylan. Dylan, give me your top waiver wire addition for the fantasy playoffs. All right, if I had to pick up a tight end, I would definitely go for Jared Cook. He That's is the Raiders' probably leading receiver on the season. Well, Cook's owned in about 90% of leagues. So absolutely, if he's available, pick him up. But is there anybody out there that may be a little deeper down that might be unavailable in some more leagues? Rashad Penny. I With like- Chris Carson being questionable... 
I actually like Rashad Penny. I have him on my list as well. Penny is at 21% owned. And Chris Carson, broken finger. Now, according to the report, apparently, and this seems strange to me, a broken finger is not that big of an injury for a running back. Now, you would think... I mean, it could, depend, hold, it could depend what hand. Right. I mean, but still, you still running backs need to maneuver between hands when they're with the ball. They ought to be able to change their hands. I do like Penny. I think that Penny is... I, I guess I'm really kind of just kind of frustrated with this whole situation because... And then I had uh, Chris Carson and Penny in a couple leagues thinking I have the whole Seattle backfield. And then this gentleman, Mike Davis, has 86 carries, 23 receptions, 99 points. And actually, ironically enough, gentlemen, just only three points behind Chris Carson for the team lead. Um, Penny has looked explosive. And this week, I really think he he put it all together. So this is his second best week of the year. Uh, seven carries, 65 yards and a touchdown. Definitely is targeted in the passing game. I like Penny. And to be honest, it, it really seems to me that Chris Carson's one of those guys when they get heavy workload, the next game they're either questionable or they don't play. This has happened a couple of times when Carson had big carries. The next week he wouldn't play. So if you're looking for – if you're one of those people who James Conner is out – Maybe take a shot on pennies. Again, only 21% owned. I really like that pick, Dylan. Brian, who are you taking a look at? Uh, I thought of two guys. Uh, Rhett Ellison for the Giants, the tight end. And then uh, Dante Pettis for San Francisco. I think Pettis is the more interesting person here in my mind. I think uh, Pettis is interesting here, Brian, because over the last two weeks, he has had four set, four catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. Five for 129, two touchdowns. He has Denver, Seattle, Chicago, though. Yeah, that is, so, that is tough. So that's my concern with anybody on the 49ers. That's also my concern with George Kittle as well, is you've got those three really yeah. good defenses here. Do you have Goodwin on your list at all? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Goodwin, and honestly... I meant for the one with uh, Tampa Bay. Godwin? Is it, God, is it Godwin? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Godwin. Godwin. Godwin for Tampa Bay. Uh, so again, I'm looking at Marquise Goodwin here, and yeah. it's saying he's missed the last two weeks. It says personal. It said he met with team officials but didn't practice at all this week. There's really been no insight. I think Pettis is at worst going to be in your flex if you can manage to get him. And Pettis, again, only owned in 2% of leagues. I mean, that's pretty incredible i would imagine that goes up significantly this week so, I, so put a, a waiver claim in for pettis for sure put it in for Rhett. i promise you Rhett is not bad is ingram playing though that you'd have to check uh, that eagles game ingram didn't even get he didn't even play he, he was active but he didn't play yeah that was odd and they said and because the broadcasters were even saying like he was healthy and all hamstring that. injury mm. and that's so typic- out and that typically can take some time to heal ellison Four for 42 um, with against the Bears, and that's a tough matchup too. If you're really struggling, maybe you were playing Greg Olson, um, which, again, so dis- unfortunate. This might be it for Greg I would Olson. Say, I, think that I said to somebody, I said, I think Greg Olson's done now uh, at I this mean, point. He, he really fought back to try to play this season, and I think he gave it an admirable shot. But, yeah, he basically said... Yeah, he doesn't know if he's going to be coming back. So, all right, my big number one person that I would go out and try to get, and again, we are saying this before we watch the game tonight, Chris Thompson. It seems like this guy has been out all season, but if you are playing in a PPR league, you just lost James Conner, you need to go pick up Chris Thompson. He has been a very tough player to gauge. In fact, I have him in a couple of leagues where I've had him all season, uh, and he's played here or there, and they just he just hasn't gotten going. He's missed the last four weeks. I'm going to be very interested to see. But again, um, for the fantasy playoffs, the Giants at Jacksonville at Tennessee. Uh, that's a pretty tough schedule. But in a PPR league, if you just lost James Conner, I think Chris Thompson's your number one. Uh, as far as a wide receiver, I would take a look at Cortland Sutton. Keeping in mind also Doug Martin is 50, uh, 56% owned. And then maybe a little bit deeper, a guy like Christian Kirk at 32%. Or as we mentioned earlier, Chris Conley yeah, at 13%. Both. So definitely go out there. Obviously, it depends on, on what you need. But I would take a look at the schedules of the teams that you're picking up to see how easy or difficult it might be. 
All right, we're going to go into the final segment of the show here where we are going to review our Super Bowl picks. And at this point, gentlemen, since we are, this will be our last podcast until January, we will come back and we'll probably take another look at this. But I do want to give us an opportunity if we want to maybe make some changes. For example, I know one of Dylan's teams has pretty much already been mathematically eliminated. Um, We can go back and make sort of a secondary pick. If you so choose. So we're going to start with Parker. Parker, previously on our, our last show in October, you had the Rams and the Chargers going to the Super Bowl. How do you feel about that today? I'm honestly still feeling confident that the Chargers had a good comeback win against my team, the Steelers. The only competition I think they're going to have tough is the Chiefs, but I feel like the Chargers have an offense that could possibly, because the Chiefs don't have a strong defense, and I think the Chargers have a good offense that they could pull up points against the Chiefs and make it possibly the Super Bowl. Wait, repeat that statement about the defense. What team was that? The Chiefs. The Chiefs' defense is pathetic. I think without Eric Berry, I think that's what's really hurting the Chiefs' defense. Well, Berry actually practiced this week for the first time, which I think is interesting. Uh, he should be back, although I at this point they're probably just not trying to rush him. Yeah. I think that they already know they're going to clinch and that they're probably not trying to rush him back. I do think Barry is, is a big-time player. So you're good with the Rams and Chargers. And then in the NFC, I think the Rams, even though they lost to New Orleans first meeting, I think the Rams could get them. It's tough to bet against them, that's for sure. All right, so Parker's going to he's gonna stand pat with Rams-Chargers. All right, we're going to come to Dylan. Dylan, uh, preseason, you had Rams and Jags. So we'll let you off the hook on the Jags. Uh, are you still going with the Rams? Oh, definitely. How can you not pick the Rams to go to the Super Bowl? I will, I'm not going to. Yeah, I, I'm not either. <laughs> You're, how, how are you not sold on the Rams, though? Because I'm more sold on the Saints. Because I'm more sold on the Cowboys. But the Saints lost to the Cowboys. I'm aware. On the road. and they're gonna Drew, have Drew Brees had a bad game. Oh, you can't win them all. Game. You can't win them all unless you're the Dolphins and from the <laughs> 70s. So, okay, so we're, we're going to let you get off the hook with the Jags. Who are you going to take? I'm going to go Rams versus Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and it's going to be like that Monday night football game. And, and what, it, an, what an amazing game. It really it's was. It's going to be an insane game. It was, it was quite surprising how cool that was. All right, Rams-Chiefs will be Dylan's picks. Uh, Brian, we're going to come back to you. Well, previously, I had Pittsburgh, and I'm not going to be honest. I don't remember who I had in the NFC. I think it was the Saints. I think I had Saints-Pittsburgh, or I had the Rams and Pittsburgh. But I'm not going against my team at this point. I'm not going to, because I, I, I'm loyal. Are you saying that the Cowboys are going to go? Yes, I am going to say. And there's a lot of people who are starting to believe it. Well, I'll tell you, defense travels, and at yes, this point, that it, it, if, we're, if we're thinking over the last month, Brian, I don't know anyone's played any better defense exactly. than the Cowboys. It was, we, it was, have the, we, and we have the defensive rookie of the year. And what's now, what's even we, more? No, it's I think it's locked already. What's even at this more point. interesting? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about Van Der Esch. Yes. is that he couldn't even get on the field when Sean Lee was there. I, I would be shocked if Sean Lee is even a Cowboy next year. Oh yeah, I don't think Sean Lee's coming back. So so you're taking the Cowboys and at this point AFC. I don't go against Tom. So you're gonna take the Patriots. Oh all right, let's let's t- let's write it down. Let's get it let's get it down. That and that's and you know what? I, I I have no problem because people I know people don't like when I talk about Tom Brady, but you can't you can't beat him. Well, I got to tell you, gentlemen, um, I'm sticking with my preseason. Uh, it didn't look so hot. Saints beat got beat week one by Tampa. Texans started off 0-3, almost went to 0-4, but since then, the Saints have been the talk of the NFC, and Houston Texans have won eight, excuse me, nine straight games. I mean, come on. They have great defense. They have good offense. Deshaun Watson's looking good. They've had some people emerge. Lamar Miller's playing well. And as far as the Saints go, yes, they lost to the Cowboys on the road, but I do not believe at home... Saints are going to lose. I think this is their season. I really do. I think that it's going to be the Saints. Um, now, we haven't really necessarily picked winners yet, so we'll do that when we get into January and we get maybe the first week of wild card out of the way. But uh, I'm going to go with the Saints and Texans. I'm, I'm sticking to that. Uh, that's been my uh, my preseason, and I'm not one of those people who, who backs off. I just wanted to see Des play that game. And you know what? Speaking of which, that, that was very sad yeah. what happened to him. Um, it's... <laughs> The guy comes to practice. He's waiting all year to get a job. Comes yep. to practice, and was it his Achilles that he? Yep. Yeah, and that's. 
I can't imagine he plays ever again and, either. And he would have been a good threat too with Mike Thomas and then Dez, the second wide receiver. That 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 and, and Drew Brees at quarterback. That Smith guy they have. Traquan Smith. He's pretty good. Though we keep talking about people not being in the league anymore. You guys do know that the XFL starts up in 2019 right. 2020 Vince, Vince is a smart man I would be shocked if Des Bryant doesn't go play there because they're already XFL's already talking about they're looking for some high like marquee yeah. players want, and and guys like that would be perfect right right well you know we don't want to get into that conversation we'll, we'll talk about that later all right gentlemen we've come into the end of another fantasy football strategy guide for December we will be back after the fantasy season we'll be back in January once we come back from our holiday break we're going to be when we come back we're going to be giving out awards our fantasy awards for the season and of course we're going to take a look at 2019 so our next top 20 list will be our 2019 top 20 list uh, which we'll talk about then guys I really appreciate you coming down here to do this I know we all enjoy this and just make sure you keep sharing this and letting everybody know that we're doing the fantasy football strategy guide here every month and we plan on being back in 2019 as well all right uh parker thank you very much for being here today my friend thank you for having me once again you're quite welcome dylan as always it's a pleasure no dylan thank you very much for being here today yep thank you and brian thank you as always for being here yes thank you sir all right so for parker rose for dylan Kleintop, for brian christiana this is paul miller and we will catch you next time on the fantasy football strategy guide (laughs) 